It's not as nice as your new hat, though. I gotta. We're gonna get a lot of compliments on you. Hello, everyone. This is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. I hope you're having an awesome day. We have another imaginative creation by Evan Perry, and his friend, who is a golfer, wanted to see if he could make some shotgun slugs out of golf balls, and Evan just knocked it out of the ballpark. Now, I'm not exactly sure how Evan made these. He didn't go into much detail, but he probably was able to get uh, several slugs out of a single ball. Evan added a steel pin that goes almost all the way through. That'll add a little bit of weight because these things are light at only 6.1 grams. So let's go out there and see how these perform. Welcome back Tal Flater folks. Jeff, Officer Greg, and Danny out here today with you. You might know I'm wearing my, uh, you might see I'm wearing my homage to Danny hat. You guys all chipped in to get Danny another hat and this is what Patreon could afford. So uh, <laughs> Danny with his duct tape hat went out and went ahead and finished the job. So Oh that's freaking nice yeah, actually. that's just like all duct tape now. There's a little strip of uh, of straw hat. You gotta have some ventilation. There. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna send this thing off to the great reward too today. However, Evan out in Texas sent some rounds that were made out of a cord out golf ball. <laughs> Jeff will show you on a little tabletop, but we got a piece of golf ball jammed down in there. Very very light rounds. We're gonna shoot them down range at uh, some various targets, including our uh, Chinese uh, Chinese satellite dish down there, and uh, we're gonna see what we can do. See if these things fly crooked, straight. What we can do. We're, we're going to use full rifling on these. I am going to use Danny's right that Danny's uh, rifled shotgun here today. Uh, full rifled barrel because uh, these things are light and pretty much cylindrical. So we're going to send them spinning and see if we can get a little bit better accuracy out of them. We, we usually don't shoot uh, goofy rounds through his rifling, but these are just, they're not going to damage the rifling. So that's, it's always important not to shoot a steel piece of rebar out, out through his rifling or anything like that. We save the goofy rounds for the Talflater shotgun. Yeah. So that way if it explodes, you know, no big loss. So yeah, that. just a few fingers. Maybe it'll clean the lead out. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll blow the lead out of this round. So put your predictions in here. Is it going to fly straight? Is it going to go hole in one? Is it, uh, it going to go all cattywampus? We're going to uh, put an eye out. Yeah, you put an eye out, kid. Go off in the rough and we'll have to uh, chip it out. <laughs> all right, let's get to it. Shot one at the walk. Is that what that thing is? Walker, walker, walker. You can see, you can tell where he's aiming because there's a laser beam mark on there. <laughs> Look how steady I'm holding it. I know. All right, here we go. Pulling one. Oh. So take a look at this thing. It tended to hit right there where we were aiming. Made a nice little divot, but here's the cool part. That little core inside, that little metal uh, pin, punched a tiny little pinhole right through there. You can kind of see the bump inside there and- That's pretty good. Little tiny pinhole right through the center like one of those anti-tank rounds. Yeah. I can't get my sausages through that little hole, but you know I've tried, Talflater folks. <laughs> I can't do the finger wiggle through that tiny little thing. Try something else. All right, traveling around 1,500 feet per second. Here comes the slug, and you can see why I painted that yellow line on there. But it hit with so much force that it just destroyed the slug almost completely. That's a lot of damage. Okay, we're gonna shoot a, bal a balloon now. I'm ready when you are. Here we go. Wow. Just vaporized it. Well, we see another very stable flying projectile. I don't think these would fly very well without that spin stabilization. Evan's always really careful about the diameter of the slugs so that they engage the rifling just right. How about a baseball bat? Can you hit a baseball bat? With a golf ball slug. We're gonna put it right between the G's. The golf ball bat. Right between the two GG's, huh? Oh yeah. Okay, let's see if you've got the skills. Okay, I'm ready. The slug flew a little bit low and just grazed the bottom of it, but still it was enough to just shatter the slug and actually damage the bat. I was kind of surprised that it even damaged the bat because bats are pretty tough. And so are golf balls. 
So we're aiming between the two G's. Oh, G's. And it hit a little bit low down here. And look at that, that steel core. You see the dimples from the golf ball. And tore that aluminum. Look at that. <laughs> That's nuts. I'm ready when you are. Four. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. You can't hurt that hat. Oh. In this shot, the steel pin got knocked loose from the tremendous acceleration. We often call that the Newton's cradle effect. But the golf ball slug was still very accurate and carried quite a bit of energy for something weighing less than 6.1 grams at this point. We still had hydrostatic shock as you can see by the plastic tearing open. Okay, we got a exploding air filled bottle. And Danny's hat, we'll see if what survives here. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, look at that hat. That's the way it's <laughs> That is a good pin now. Did you hear that secondary? Kaboom. Boom, boom. <laughs> That's what happened after uh, the bottle blew up under Danny's hat. I think with a little bit of duct tape, uh, he could fix that thing up and have it good to go by next, uh, next shoot. What do you think, Mr. Danny? Betcha. And we were using one of those big blast uh, bottle caps. I think you can still get them at Walmart for this. And we pressurized this thing to about 125 PSI. A lot of energy there. Next up, we're going to shoot this uh, Wii Generation 1.0. <laughs> I am ready. I'll let you guys guess where we were aiming, but uh, this thing impacted a little bit left. Punched a nice little hole in the uh, metal case here. And Danny found this out in the dirt nearby and off to the left. It bounced over and landed right near that uh, lovely little it's pond. tough. Yeah. That's some hard, that focus? Hard, hard stuff in there. Some hard little... It's, a little soup. it's got... A carrying handle now. Sure, I think you could send that out to a Patreon. They put on a, <laughs> put on a necklace. They might want it. I don't know. It's an ear gauge. Now in this shot, the steel pin stayed in place, and as the CD-ROM player turns around, you can see that there's an exit hole from that steel pin. Could these be the perfect home defense round? You decide. All right, rhetoricalize it. Will the little steel penetrator core make it through lead plate junior? Let's find out. Okay, here comes the slug. And here comes the steel pin. That one got knocked out too. Now this was actually our last shot, so we didn't have another slug to test on the lead plate, unfortunately. Sorry about that. So the slug hit here, the pin got knocked out. Look how that pin hit that thing sideways and dug in there, broadside. That is pretty cool. Whoa! Ballistic jelly! Good on strudel! Try to hit it this time. Use your kinetic energies. My gun foo. Gun foo. Okay, I'm ready. I see the slug. You see it? Yep. Okay, so we determined that this thing hit a little bit right. It went in about three inches and then bounced back out. And if I had a nickel for every time that happened. <laughs> And then outside the uh, on the back side of the table, we found uh, the core of that slug. And again, that little steel uh, penetrator oh. zapped right on through. But is it is there a little hole that went all the way through? We could not find a hole there. The only oops, let me bring it up. The only hole we found is down here to the right, but I don't think that's from this. This is okay. from something else. Yeah. This should have been its exit, but it didn't. It went in. And that's uh, a nice piece of gel. But. That is brand new gel, folks.
Yeah. This is the dawning of a Dune here <laughs> at Jeff's gel house. Ballistic booga. <laughs> now in this shot, the steel pin got knocked backwards and is stuck into the plastic wadding. And what happens next still baffles me. Maybe you can see something I'm not seeing. But the slug just kind of emerges from outside, from the back, even though we didn't see any exit holes. Maybe we just missed something. I don't know. I looked at that block again afterwards and couldn't find another hole. So maybe you got some ideas. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. This was made possible by our very kind and generous Patreon supporters, even though I misspelled Patreon there. In the last few weeks, things have gotten kind of depressing and miserable because all of a sudden, a lot of our videos have been getting demonetized. We ask for a review and they just deny it still. I can honestly say that without our Patreon supporters who we're actually working for at this point, we would have no motivation to go out and spend two or three hours out in the hot sun to film these things for you guys. So I hope you guys appreciate these generous people. Thanks for watching.